the lack of African genetic material in the global medical field constitutes a significant obstacle to understanding how our bodies and diseases function. The African genome are not only humanity's oldest, but our most diverse, and that diversity holds within it an almost limitless potential. From scientific breakthroughs to new cures to learning humanity's history, we tell our children about ourselves. About 99% of all our genetic information comes from Africa, and the rest of the world just took a fraction of our genetic diversity with them to other areas of the planet. But us in Africa have held the vast majority of humanity's DNA, and as we intermarried and reproduced, the diversity remained buffeted and transformed by the environmental pressures, including diseases. Tapping into that diversity has implications for all of us and possibly the solution of saving the world from a future pandemic. According to Dr. Abasi N. Ebon, the founder and CEO of Africa Biotech Startup 54Gen, Black Africans and people of Black ancestry are more genetically diverse than all other populations in the world combined, making the genetic information a huge resource to be tapped. So 54 gene, the 54 there represents uh, the 54 countries in Africa, which obviously tells you that we want to expand across the continent. And the gene there means that at heart, we are genetic uh, in terms of how we apply what we do. So to tell you what we do, um, we provide genetic testing uh, directly to consumers and to uh, hospitals in Africa. Dr. Bassi said, that knowledge of the role of genetic plays in disease will help in developing relevant treatment for new and existing conditions, even cancer. Well, here's one issue that we find in, in Africa and in Nigeria too. You have cancer, you go to see a doctor. Because they don't, we haven't built the genetic capability in the country, the doctor prescribes a drug for you blindly. Right? When I say blindly, what we mean is that today's cancer drugs have been made to target specific subtypes of cancers. He was quoted saying, drugs are not even made with Africans in mind. They are not trialed clinically within African populations. So what you have is drugs with low efficiency for African populations and with poorer safety profiles, he added. Our goal is to make sure that people are being diagnosed and treated using similar standards of care that you will find in UK and the United States. New drugs take time to reach Africa, sometimes between 15 and 20 years. This is because pharmaceutical giants often manufacture drugs for the profitable Western markets, and the generic variants are only available in Africa after these companies have lost their patents. Dr. Abasi further added that the way to fix this lag is to increase access to genomic data from African population to promote inclusive scientific research. This will lead to an optimized treatment and diagnostic outcomes that will not only treat Africans, but everyone else around the planet. Um, by the end of this year, we'll have genomic samples from 40,000 people coupled with their medical records. Um, and you know, by the end of next year, we'll probably have close to half a million. Um, now that powers drug research. Um, the goal is, uh, the reason we do that is that we find that African genetic information um, is actually valuable to, to understanding mutations that you can model as drugs. In conclusion, we have lived the longest as humans on the African continent, and that has a very, very important implication for understanding how forces that exist on the continent help shape the present-day human genome, either in terms of how to survive infectious disease or to survive the environment. If you like informative and educational videos on Africa, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. And please feel free to leave your suggestions, news tips, or topics about Africa you'd like us to cover.